welcome back. Well, as you can see, I've treated myself to a Clarks and Tool and Cutter Grinder. And, uh, well, it's the first time I've used it, and uh, I've got a job on. I've got a very, very old drill bit here, as you can see. It's well rusty, but I need to bore a hole, and um, all my drill bits are all uh, MT drill bits, and uh, mainly for the lathe, and I've got no MT units for the mill. So, uh, and costs are really long, the table is really low anyway, so it's difficult. So, this old drill bit I found, and it's got a tapered shank on it, um, it was bent, I put it in the lathe, I gripped it here in the lathe, I spun it in the lathe, warmed it up with the gas bottles, and um, straightened it out, and then just took a fine skim off, so now it is spinning somewhat light. All I've got to do is drill a couple of holes through two pieces of plate, which I just might show you in a little while, and... Uh, away we go but what I wanted to show you was uh, this contraption let me just bring the camera around now this I bought must be four or five years ago from MSC and I think it was about £150 at the time and quite a few people did buy them and then within about a month they all end up on eBay and it was selling for anywhere from £50 to £75 nobody thought it was a pile of junk um, in a way, they were, and till Alan Pierce got his hands on it. Um, we made some modifications for it, came up with some designs, and normally we've been using it on the um, Jones and Shipman surface grinder, uh, sitting on the magnetic base and sharpening embils and things like that. But it's a bit of a clumsy thing on there to use, but I think on this machine on this Clarkson tool and cutter grinder it'll come into its own um, what we did is we or Alan did actually he's made some indexing tools for it now we did this which as you can see you can index now these fit on the end of the shaft and on the back here I'll bring you around and show you we've got a little chock here. So what happens is, once that's secured onto this shaft, you can pull the shaft back, just move it, so I can move the shaft can be pulled back, indexed, and back on again. So you can see how many index positions it's got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. So you can index it 12 times, so on a 6 flute cu um, cutter you can index it 6 times, 4 you can do it 4, uh, 2 obviously you can do it 2, it, it really made them, you know, a great piece of kit out of it, and um, it works, it works really well. We made one for this small shaft because uh, all there is is bushings in here, there's no collets to tighten up so it's just in a bush, and then an, there's a <coughs> an Allen screw that screws in. Same as this, just to grip the shaft. So it's nothing brilliantly special. But when you relieve the handle back from that position to this position, it gives you about 9 degrees, and that will give you uh, um, the side flute angle on your, on your drill bits, or on your milling cutters. So that's a shaft. That's the larger shaft. As you can see, you put bushings in them and then just tighten them up in the frame, just put a bush in them. So there's loads of different sized bushings for different size end mills or drill bits. And that one's already on there, so you can imagine that. And you open these three pins here, they've got ball bearings on the end, so they spin on them, and just put a bit larger shaft in to put larger collets. And there's a little collet you can see floating around in the bottom of there. They just pop in the end. And it, it does work. That's that's so that's indexed on there now. So you can you can just index it. It's great. So it does work. And uh, I think for this it'll come out quite well. Another thing I made, another part I made for it was this. This fits underneath it. And as you can see, it's wedge shape. Uh, I think it's at I can't remember how many degrees it's at now. To be fair. And what this does is fit underneath, and that puts the angle on for doing end mills on the Jones and Shipman. 
so it'll actually put the angle on it on the on the tool and uh, that will give you the the end mill that will give you the angle of the end mill so that's another thing we made for it as well so all these little if you have got one of these um, and you make these kind of things for it you'll find it will work I'm laughing in oil now but I just really wanted to show you that uh, another I bought quite a few tools just lately um, all in due course uh, I bought a diamond cutter for it as well so I could do um, just a Chinese one to do uh, carbide and obviously I've got an angle vise as well and an angle plate so therefore I can do um, different shape uh, cutting tools for the lathe and so on and so forth so that will go on there as well so we can do carbide that's the plan but there's a lot of work to do and I'm gonna to have to make some tools for it to um, to uh, to use it but it's not in position yet it's going to go over there next to the mill and the surface grinder and uh, I'm hopefully it'll become a pretty useful tool and we'll be able to use this as well to do the end flutes and I will probably I have one of those small tools I'll just fetch it and show you I'll move the camera I just wanted to show you the uh, the model number that came on this and its identification plate um, it's actually fallen off so I'll try and You can stop your video on that, okay? And that was glue on there. I'm going to glue it back on again in a moment. So that was the, it's an end mill cutter sharpener stock 235-004. And I'm pretty sure I got it from MSC. It said says model on there, but there's actually nothing, there's nothing in there whatsoever. It's not been stamped. So, end mill, quarter sharpener, stock, 235-004. And the model, no idea. Okay, I just thought I'd share that with you. I do have one of these. Um, Alan Pierce has got a great video out on how to use this. Uh, it is excellent. Put your collets in there with whatever size milling cutter you've got and then you've got the angle to sharpen them and this just sits on the magnetic table of the, the surface grinder and it will then do the end flutes but if you ever look at Alan Pierce's video on it he shows it at its best because you just can't fly in and grind the end flutes without cutting the centers out as well. So you need to cut the centers out. And a lot of people show this tool being worked, but there's not that many people show it being worked properly. And Alan's got it off to a T. Um, and when what you can do, obviously, you just undo this, and you index, you can index your tool round to however many flutes, whatever position you've got. They are a great bit of kit, so I think for end flutes, this will, once I've sharpened the side flutes on the Clarkson, then I think this will still be going on the on the surface grinder just to do the end flutes off. I might come up with an end flute system. This will do end flutes. I've done them before on it. It move, means moving it all round. And, but, you, you know, not quite sure. But if you haven't got one of these, these are great. Honestly, if you've got a surface grinder, these are brilliant. But watch Alan Pierce's video on how to use it. And uh, he's really got it off to a tee. The reason I wanted to um, get the drill bit going is because I need to bore this out to it's 28mm, 29mm. I've just took the tool bit out. I've been boring away, but I can only do 5 milli, five, five thou at a time. Plus the tool bit's flexing. So I'm only getting 5 thou at a time, and I've worked out it's about 78 passes and it's just taking me so long I actually bored it out with, I'm not sure what that size is, half inch 5 eighths, something like that so 
So that was the first shot went through, and I've been boring away, and it's just doing me head in. These are two brackets I'm making for the front load of a tractor. Um, it's for another project, it's quite a big project. Um, hopefully, I'll get some filming of it being done. So that's why I'm, I want to drill these out bigger. So um, hopefully now I can drill them out larger and then just finish them off. And then there's pins that go through here, so that's the idea. This is a... Um, I'll show the box, you can see the box there. It's a bridge port forward head, but it's only quite small. Um, they're only 10 mil, so it's, it's quite small and quite dainty. For a mill this size, it wants something an awful lot bigger. So that's what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to have a go at drilling these out and uh, make them a little bit larger. It's in quite good condition, as you can see. Just rigged a temporary light up at the moment. And there's the shop dog Henry. Uh, it's very tidy, it came from a university. There's no tooling with it, it said he couldn't find any, so hey ho, but uh, never mind. Right, I'll get that drill bit out of there and um, we'll see if we can bore those out a little bit bigger. And I've said uh, I'm putting new lighting up, and these are the new lights we're putting up. Replacing those old strip lights. And I've got two up, and I'll show you what they look like. There we go. There's four all together. So, I have two more to go. We'll get them up this afternoon. The box just has to be upside down, doesn't it? Right, so it's all going on. Thanks for watching.